16 game inning streak. Swinging a hot bat right now. That two run home run by Miller in the top half of the inning does change the strategy a bit for Rob Wygod, but that's going to help his strategy as the pitch, a wild pitch. But down two to nothing in the opening frame, Rob Wygod pretty much was scrubbing the sacrifice. That's the kind of thing you pull if you're trying to tie the game or take a lead. The book on that is if you're on the road, you play for the lead. If you're at home, play for the tie because you will get the last at bat. Jeremy Hess, whose varsity career pretty much started right here on the campus of Los Alamitos back when he was a freshman. Got the assignment of hurling for the Bruins on the varsity level in a playoff game right here at Los Alamitos. Boy, talk about a tough situation to make a debut. In fact, that was the subject of a press telegram feature story in uh, today's, the Friday edition of the press telegram. That pitch again down low. Hess, who has made a living downstairs, is now working a little too far down low. He's bounced one already for a wild pitch. That's what allowed Castillo to advance to second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. The Griffins trying to rally, trailing two to nothing. On deck, Chad Lindholm. Fouled at the plate off of That's it, Jeremy. Come on, you got a battle. Wasik's having a tough time out there behind the plate. He's a good catcher. He hasn't let many pass balls. In fact, he's only allowed two pass balls all season. So he's been a good blocker of the plate, of the balls that uh, may be thrown errant. The count full as it was to Castillo to lead things off. The 3-2 down low, and just like to the leadoff batter, Hess battles back to a full count but still ends up walking. That'll bring up Chad Lindholm on deck. Mick Fitzgerald, the cleanup hitter. Left-handed hitting Lindholm. He got off to a slow start this, this season, but he has picked it up considerably. Had a shoulder injury that sidelined him for a couple of weeks. Here in the bottom of the first inning, nobody out as the leadoff batter and the number two hitter aboard on base on balls. Number three hitter asked to sacrifice. Hess feels nicely, but then throws it into left field. That's going to allow Castillo to score. Advancing to third is Godfrey. Lindholm stays at first base. So credit Lindholm with a sacrifice. However, the error on Hess allows him to reach first base. Castillo scores from second. Godfrey advances to third. So that's better than a sacrifice. It works wonderfully for Lindholm because he doesn't get an at bat. He gets on base, gets credit for a sacrifice. Well, Hess wheeled and threw the ball errant toward third base. The third baseman was nowhere around. He was covering, but I think Hess just threw the ball before he took a good look, trying to hurry that throw to get the lead runner. Well, the problem was with Hewitt returning to third base, he was turned to his left, and I think Hess was trying to hit him on the run without throwing it behind him to his right, and instead he just threw it too far to his left. As a result, one run will score, and it's a two-to-one ball game. Big break for the Griffins. Without benefit of a hit, the Griffins have a run and have runners at the corners with nobody out, and their cleanup hitter, Mick Fitzgerald, at the plate. This game at this rate could last into next week, but that's all right as long as somebody ends up a winner. I did do a game with, in softball when Lisa Fernandez and Dee Dee Wyman in high school softball pitched a 29 inning game, two days it took, before Gar finally lost to St. Joseph, one to nothing, and the girl who got the game winning hit was 0 for 10 in the game, having struck out all 10 times Aaron Prangley before finally getting a base hit to win it. You could say she was due. 1 0 as Hess again missing low. Fakes to third, back to first. Nobody's falling for it. 
Fitzgerald is the Sunset League co-MVP this year. He leads the team in home runs and RBIs. Well, if the Griffins are going to get their first hit, they'd like to see it now. The pitch a strike as Hess just blew some gas right by Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was able to cock, but that was it. Turned the hips, and the ball was by him. Hess seems to almost thrive on these kind of situations where his back is against the wall. He usually takes command. The pitch down low in the dirt. If I'm not mistaken, this mound is considerably lower than the mound that they use at Blair Field. And that will affect the pitcher's motion. And unless he makes an adjustment, he'll continue to have problems finding the strike zone. It's a flat mound. A taller mound benefits a power pitcher. This one hit into left field. It was a hit and run. Edwin Gutierrez, the shortstop, had gone over to cover. And then the throw goes into the dugout or no. Yes, it goes into the dugout. That'll be a two-base error on the throw from the outfielder. That will allow the runner, Lindholm, to score all the way from first. He had already gotten to second, so when the ball goes out of play, he gets two bases from where he was at when the ball went out of play. Fitzgerald was on first, so he goes to third. It's 3-2 to two in favor of the Griffins on just one base hit here in the bottom of the first inning. And they've gotten to the ace of the staff, Jeremy Hess. Well, they've gotten, he's been his own worst enemy. He's walked two batters, and then he threw Aaron to third and then gives up a single. So in some cases, he has no one to blame but himself. And another run just 90 feet away as ball steps to the plate. Swing and a miss. Jared Ball is the batter. Swing and a miss. Down goes Ball. However, the put out has to be made at first base as the pitch again in the dirt but a good play by Wasik to block it out in front. So a strikeout put out two to three. That is the first out of the first inning. And it comes to the fifth hitter, Jared Ball, who strikes out. Ryan Hansen now steps to the plate. Even if Hess can get out of this inning without any further damage, really the damage has already been done. A two run lead is vaporized all before the first out was recorded. For those of you follow, those of you who follow football know this young man. Much aware of him. Well, let's put it this way: number 11, Los Alamitos. It doesn't matter baseball or football; it's the same guy, Ryan Hansen. Tough youngster. I saw him. I saw him during a game get smacked on a point after. He was the snapper on the point afters, which is a heck of a place to put your starting quarterback. But that's where he was at. Curveball, a strike. He was the Orange County Player of the Year in football and quite a catcher. The <laughs> Rob Wygod was saying that he feels like he's one of the best catchers in Southern California, if not the best. One down, count two and one. The Griffins lead it three to two. That pitch called a strike. Or no, it's the ball. Can't tell with the motion of the umpire. He looked like he was getting ready to punch the ticket, but instead the count now three and one. Bob Stavisky is the home plate umpire from the Inland Empire. The 3-1, a curve again, foul tipped, and it got a piece of Wasik. The home plate umpire goes to hand Wasik the ball, but he doesn't want to hold the ball. He doesn't want to hold the glove. He wants nothing to do with it. He takes a stroll around home plate as uh, Bob Stavisky talks with him and see if he's okay. But that's smart. It. Ron Hansen is batting 333. He's second in the team on that in with RBIs. So the count now full. Oh, 
Mark Claybo stepping out. I think he wants to check on his catcher. He wants Hess to throw a practice pitch to see if Wasik's okay. That's smart for a couple of reasons. The count should be full. It was three and one, then the foul tip. The scoreboard now changes to a three and two count. One down, here comes the pitch. Chopped, third base way, but it is foul. Just one down here in the bottom of the first inning, a three to two Griffin lead. It has not been the pitcher's duel as advertised. No, both of these pitches have started out real shaky. Let's put it this way, Jeremy Hess has given up as many runs as the four times we've seen him this year. In fact, more, more runs than all the times we've seen him before this. The pitch, strike three. Well, Ryan Hansen didn't like that one. And I can't believe that he didn't because it was such a good pitch. If you're gonna question the umpire, you better make it a questionable pitch. That pitch was just too good. Well, sometimes you put on that little act for your, for your coach and your players is that, why did you get caught looking? And he said it wasn't a strike. And he, you act like it, but uh, in your heart, you really know it was a strike. I'll tell you why he took that one looking because he was expecting a curveball and just took the fastball for a strike. Each time that Hess has had a three and two count when he has delivered the fastball, it's been down low and he's walked the batter. So with a three one count, a curveball was fouled off. So I think Hansen was thinking curveball and instead took the fastball. Hess now ahead 0 and 2 as he has regained his composure and his equilibrium and he's ahead of the count on David Smith 0 and 2. Smith was the pitcher of record in the win against Downing. He's 6 and 2. Won that baseball game. Time he has out. two saves. Timeout called at the plate and fortunate for Hess because he was very close to balking. If he balks here, a run will score. He is one pitch away from getting out of this jam, down by just one. Lifted towards center, Chris Miller has a bead, eyes it, and brings it in for the final out. But a wild bottom of the first inning for Los Alamitos as they score three runs. They do it on just one base hit. There were two Bruin errors and one runner left on base. We're through one inning of play. It's 3-2 Los Alamitos. Hi, folks. Welcome back to our coverage on our Ed Dodd Sports Game of the Week. My name's Willie Padilla, along with me, Errol Parker, the rest of our Ed Dodd Sports crew, our producer director, Ray Sharp, who is going to be a busy man today. He's got a doubleheader of sorts. This great matchup to be followed by Friday Film Forum. So it's not over when it's over, even. This radio will never get out of here. How to murder your wife will be what Ray Sharp will show his guest at the Friday Film Forum. It is a movie, not a class. It is not a class. It's, it's not a, a class. Movie. I thought it was an instructional video or something. But uh, it's going to be a movie. And next week will be your favorite, Willie, The Sting. Yes, with Paul Newman and Robert Redford and Robert Shaw. That is a classic movie. It certainly is. Here we go to the top of the second inning. The Bruins, for the first time this year, we see them trailing. Billy Gwynn leads it off. Billy is the leading hitter for the Bruins. That pitch misses down low. Batting better than 500. It's a one-run lead for the Griffins. Five runs by both teams were scored in that first inning. Gwynn goes down the line. It goes under the glove of Dave Smith. It dies in left field. Gwynn turns the bag. He'll hold a board on the error. That was an error on Smith as he tried to olay it backhanded style instead of getting in front of it. That'll bring up Brian Hewitt. Yeah, he tried to backhand that one, and it got under his glove and into left field. The pitch down low as 
Hewitt shows bunt. Brian Hewitt at the plate. In their victory over Thousand Oaks, it was it was party time for the Bruins. Everybody was involved in that victory. Looking, looking back at the numbers as the pitch misses. Gutierrez scored two runs. Miller scored one, had five RBIs. Kevin Miller scored twice, had one RBI. Billy Gwynn, an RBI, a run scored. Hewitt, a run scored, two RBI. Wasik, two RBIs. Marshall, one run scored, one RBI. The pitch a strike. This one may be as offensive, but I think their opponent will try and match him a little better than Thousand Oaks did. Thousand Oaks let Wilson get ahead and far away and couldn't catch up. This one into right field for a base hit. Gwynn rounds the bag as he spots the ball going into right field and runners at the corners for the Bruins. An error and a base hit. And the Bruins are back in business. It was, it appeared to be a hit and run single for Hewitt. As Gwynn was on the move, Lindholm, the second baseman, ran to second base to cover. That created a huge hole between first and second, and that's exactly where Hewitt knocked it through. Runners at the corners, nobody out. That'll bring up Brady Warner, the surprise add to the Bruin lineup for this game. We haven't seen him all year. He's into designated hit for Todd Marshall. Werner is usually a pitcher, a senior. He's batting 308. This is only his 27th at bat this year. This one lifted to deep center. Back goes the center fielder. Gone! How do you like me now? Brady Werner. You think the ball carries here? <laughs> well, he sure makes Mark Claybo look like a genius. Inserting him into the starting lineup for Todd Marshall, he says, thank you very much. As I'm a senior and leaving Wilson High School, I hit one of the biggest home runs in Wilson history thus far he this was, season. You could say he was due, and indeed he delivers his second home run of the season. And it couldn't have come at a better time for the Bruins, who now lead it 5-3. to three. This is already shaping up to be an incredible ball game. I'll tell you what, the Bruins have brought out their big sticks tonight. <laughs> Mike Stembridge, the pitching coach, goes out to talk to Gwen. To, to Gwen and tries to calm him down. Looks like he was scolding him a little. He must have done something that he didn't like. The home run was a result of it. <laughs> Greg Wasik now at the plate. Nice slow curve by Schwinn. Schwinn, a senior. He has been lit up for two home runs. Popped up, first base side. In the sun, first baseman loses it, and Lindholm loses it and falls for a hit. So much for the home field advantage. Well, the sun it was a factor in this. He overran that, lost it in the sun, and it's just a long base hit for Wasik. Edwin Gutierrez at the plate, nobody out.